Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So I have gotten a lot of comments about the keystroke visualizer that I programmed uh, that you can see down here, which shows exactly what key I'm pressing and whether or not I'm pressing Control, Shift, and Alt and exactly what that key does. Oh, it's amazing. How did I do that? Well, the answer, as is always the case with me, is auto hotkey. So here is the code. Uh, here is the... Um, script itself right here. It comes in two parts. There's an INI file and an auto hotkey file. I'm not really entirely sure what an INI file is because I am not the original person to program this. This was made in like 2005 by this guy as a part of a one hour software thingy. And uh, <laughs> I made a lot of changes to the code using my own extremely uh, poor knowledge of how to do this stuff. This went through a ton, a ton of changes. And the cool part that I added for sure is the fact that it shows what the command is that is actually being used in Premiere. But anyway, I'm just going to take you down a quick explanation of how this script works so you can tailor it to your own setup if you want to use it. So basically it loads uh, the INI file, which I still don't entirely understand, but it's just full of information. And you can just, you know, change the information in here if you really wanted to. But I found that it's more trouble than it's worth, and in fact, I duplicated some of the info so I can change it in the original AutoHotKey script. This is intended to make it easier for regular people to just, you know, change the uh, INI file right here, or however you're supposed to do it. But don't worry too much about that. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you know more programming than I do. Um, this is a variable. Ugh, uh, let's get back to that one later. <laughs> uh, more variables that I needed. The GUI. Oh my goodness. The auto hockey GUI is the worst part of the program I've ever had to stumble my way through. I still don't know how it works. I think all these things are important. I don't know. Uh, like first we configure, we say, GUI, please begin existing and also have a font that is, um, I guess, Arial and a certain size, which is 400. Plus, it's, I don't know, it's weird how these variables are defined. It's like a letter and then the variable all without a space. I, I don't know. There's no commas to separate. It doesn't make any sense. Um, you may notice all these W's here. If you refresh this, you'll see that it looks like that. That's the very first thing you ever see. And those W's are necessary because otherwise it actually won't be able to display text beyond a certain point. Like if, if you don't have them, it'll only have so many characters that display. So you can see that I have the key on the top and then the command or function or whatever it's called on the bottom, and that's in a different color, just because that makes it more convenient. And uh, ugh, figuring this out was horrible because you can't change the text color like midway through. You have to load it from the beginning. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. And then there's more GUI craft to make the background of this uh, invisible. You can see it's a little bit black right here, but as soon as I uh, press a key, it goes to being invisible, which is fantastic. The only issue, of course, is that like if I'm here, yeah, you can hardly read that, but uh, whatever. It's designed just to work for Premiere, so that's fine. Messing with uh, transparency was a nightmare, but I finally, finally figured it out, and I don't want to touch this code anymore. This is important. If you don't have this here, it loops like infinity times per second. As long as you have even just one millisecond of sleep in there, it will use way less of your computer's resources. Basically how the script works is it's a giant loop. And it's always, always, always looping through and trying to see what key you're pressing. Uh, let's see, where's the actual, yeah, right here. Get key state, a key that is physically held down. If the state is down, then you put that into the keys variable and that's your key. And I don't know why there's two of these. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Don't know how this works really. <laughs> I should. This code turned out to not be useful at all. I don't know what it's for. Uh, here we have the information for creating the uh, function underneath. Let's just skip this one for now. Here we have skipping the modifier keys. And I did that because if I do something like control D to apply a crossfade transition, if I didn't ignore modifier keys, it would be it would just show a control and then a D and then and then it would vanish and turn back into a control. These modifier keys down here are actually an entirely separate script that only loads those three modifier keys. It does nothing else. Uh, and this one up here has everything uh, non-modifier key related. And I did it that way because, uh, I don't know, I couldn't find a better way to accomplish my goals. I'm probably not explaining this very well, but the point is, like, get rid of this and you'll see that it doesn't work as well. 
Okay, so, so this is just to make sure that it skips the modifier keys. Uh, creating the color, creating the font size. This actually I don't think does anything. This is where the magic happens. It will display as text the key that you've pressed as is saved in that variable. And then this is the second line which shows, uh, again, which shows the actual function that is underneath. And then we have, I don't even think that this is important and I'm not sure if this is important or not. And then we have some variables and this is what causes it to dim. And that's important because otherwise it would only show up when I'm actually pressing the button, but I want it to linger a little bit after I'm done pressing that button so you can still read it. Uh, but if I don't dim it, then you don't know that I'm not still pressing it. You see how that works? Press, 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 press. And then it'll linger for just a little bit before it vanishes. And that's done just with a timer, which is uh, implemented here. And then it like has to loop back through and go all the way back up to here before it'll actually accomplish the dimming because I could not get this to work unless it was already inside the loop. Uh, I don't understand it. Some things just don't make sense, but you just make it work however it's gonna work. And then that's pretty much it. That's the whole thing. It's actually quite simple if you get it working. And then here we have, this is just code to move the whole thing around. So you can actually click and move it around uh, if you really wanted to, but I don't. So I should probably just delete this code. And uh, then we have my weird ass timers, which uh, I was trying to change the text color in here, but it doesn't work. Um, and it's impossible to change even the transparency. So I just used a variable and then have it detect it further up in the in the loop, so whatever. And then this just creates the INI file and I uh, have had to modify it to not show special characters. Uh, they used to be here because it would actually display it in an odd way and I saved it for this key. You can see that it's actually showing both the little, uh, the little weird pseudo uh, quotation mark and also the tilde. It shows them both at the same time and I don't know how to turn that off. I don't know how. The only way I can do it is to delete one of them and then it'll only show one of them because otherwise this three would actually be showing three hashtag. Four would be showing four dollar sign. So I just deleted the dollar sign and the parentheses and the, and the percentage sign and so on so it won't display that and so that it'll actually work. But anyway, the fun part about this script and what makes it so unique and I've never seen this done in a tutorial where it's automated is that it shows you the exact commands that are, uh, are being done. Again, as you have already seen, it shows the commands. Oh, that's amazing. So on lynda.com, they will show you the keyboard shortcut, but it's not a script that does it. They have to add that in manually after the fact, and it's just not enough. Uh, I want to know every single keyboard shortcut that you've pressed as a viewer, and I want to know every single action of the mouse that you've done as a viewer, because otherwise I'm not entirely sure what you're doing. I don't, I don't even need to explain this. Like it just makes sense inherently. So the trouble that you will run into if you're not using Premiere is how on earth do you get that list of commands? How does it know what command each keyboard shortcut does? Well, fortunately, Premiere has this very handy dandy little function. I don't know why they put it in where you can copy all of your information on your keyboard shortcuts straight to the clipboard. The only other way that I can conceive of where you would get this information into a text file or something would be to manually copy down each one of these line by line or possibly go to save as and try to decompile the KYS file that results. But fortunately, we can just copy to clipboard, go to a text editor, paste it, and there it is, all the information. There's the H key and it induces the slide tool and so on and so forth. Oh, it's just magnificent. But the trouble here is that this is in a form that is not ugh, super easy for me to use because I'm not very good at coding. So what I've done is I made a couple of modifications to that information to make it more easy for my scripts to read. So basically, here's the final product. This is a completely baked casserole here. And I'm going to show you the process of baking the casserole now. All of this could have been done with a script, but I'm still learning like string manipulation. So I just do it manually. So Control A to select everything. Shift tab 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 to get rid of all the tabs on the left side. But it retains all of the tabs that are in the middle of your little lines here. Oh my goodness! So now you can use those tabs as a guaranteed separator of the the command from the actual keys that are used to induce that command. But instead of tabs, I just wanted to take these and replace them with uh, ampersands, which again is very easy. Just do control F, 
uh, find what? Let's say find tab. Oh, except that you can't do that. So actually what you have to do is you have to copy and paste a tab thingy. Yeah. Uh, find what? Oh, I actually had it highlighted, so that worked as well. Find a tab, replace it with ampersand. Replace all. There we go. Okay, so that's good. One problem with this is that it will actually put multiple keyboard shortcuts on the same line along with its command that it induces. And don't get me wrong, I'm so happy that you can assign multiple shortcuts per command in uh, Premiere. But it's uh, problematic for this particular thing that I'm doing here. So what I have to do, uh, I'm sure somebody could write a script to make this happen. But what I had to do was I had to go in manually and delete uh, the multi-line thingies and just save one of each. So as you can see here, I'm just getting rid of, here we go, getting rid of the multiples and putting them all on their own lines. And so I, I went through and I did that for every single one of them. I, uh, I fixed that all up. And then the last problem we have is that they use little pluses. Yeah, a little plus. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that, find plus, replace with a space, replace all. Bam. Ah, so much cleaner. And you may be thinking, oh no, Taryn, what if I have control plus mapped to something? Well, don't fear because control plus is never mapped to anything. If we search for uh, that, it's actually equals because there's no such thing as a thing that uses a shift because it just shows the shift instead of showing the character that results from the shift. Does that make sense? If I undo and I, uh, I get those pluses back, you can see control plus is actually, <laughs> it's so stupid. It's written out as control plus equals and control minus is written out as control plus minus. Uh, never mind, it doesn't matter. All you gotta know is uh, find what, find a plus, replace it with a space bar, replace all, now you're good. And you never have to worry about the pluses again. And so now this is pretty much in the almost the final form of what I did. Uh, there's a few issues with the fact that uh, some of the keys are used twice, like selection tool V. I think I have V for something else as well. Like R is the rectangle tool, but if you search, you will find that it is also the rolling edit tool, right? So it's both of those things. So whatever comes first, it will actually show in the visualizer. So I'm just going to delete that one there. So anyway, the result of all of my changes to this file here ultimately resulted in this fancy pants little thingy here. I'm going to open that notepad plus plus. And so here's all my amazing stuff. Um, and the trouble is if I change a shortcut in Premiere, I have to go back and manually change it in this text document now, unless I want to do all that nonsense again. So anyway, it reads through that little text document that I just explained in a very convoluted way. And uh, uh, index is the current line number you're looking at, the exact string of the line, it takes that and it uh, just looks for the ampersand and then does some fancy pants math, whatever to uh, add one so it doesn't include the ampersand, string trim right, uh, creates that into the variable activity, and then it just uses that variable down here as the command, ta-da, that is resultingly shown, ta-da, in Premiere. So that's uh, the whole thing. Um, as you can see right here, it's just a text file that is in the same location as keystroke viz.ahk. Oh, I'm going to save this and I hope I didn't ruin anything by showing you guys stuff, um, which is located here. Yes, there we go. So all of these are in the same location. And then here's the original script that I copied it all from. So you'll need all three of these all in the same place. And if you don't have an INI file, it'll create it for you because that's part of the original script. Uh, here's the INI. Uh, the original script says read INI, but if it doesn't uh, already exist, it will create it using this information right here, as you can see. Uh, so I actually have to modify this every time that I delete, huh, every time I delete something out of the INI file, which of course I have done, because you can see some of those special characters are intentionally missing. Anyway, there may be a better way to do all of this, but this is the way that I've done it, and um, I think it'll really improve my tutorials again. Um, so if you were wondering how I did that, now you know. I'm going to end this lesson that is probably longer than it needs to be again. So, goodbye. That's all.